Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with a Mighty Jingles. Bringing the replay contest to a close, this is the last roundup video you're going to see. The next video you see will include the winner. But, as I mentioned in videos from the previous days, um, you should just go ahead and assume that pretty much any video that you've seen in the last three days, including this one, are all the runners-up. And all of these guys had a shot of winning. There were just so many great light tank replays that had been sent in. Like this one. This is Aslak in his T50-2. Now, where is he? There's a, there's a, there's only a couple of retards on this team. The KV-2 and KV-3 drivers. Uh, the KV, don't worry about the KV-2. He gets his ass killed just about straight away, sitting on top of the hill with his monstrous derp gun, thinking he's a tank destroyer. The KV-3, unfortunately, survives a little bit longer. Um, one of the most heavily armoured tanks on the team. We could have really used him here at the Northern Railway crossing. But no, instead, he thinks he's a Yag Panther sitting on top of the hill, missing everything with his 122mm gun. Like right so who's actually coming for this Northern crossing? There's us and a 3001P. And the 3001P is doing exactly the wrong thing. He's distracted by those me other tanks that have managed to slip across the middle crossing. And he's turned his turret around. Oh, sitting in the middle of an open field. Getting shot at by these guys. And there you go, he pays the price. So now there's nobody holding the Northern Cross, and there weren't enough of us came down here anyway. Even I mean, even if the 3001P had not been an idiot, and not stopped in the middle of an open field to try to shoot an ELC AMX, and gotten up to the crossing, and the guys that came over would have killed him anyway, so he was screwed. And he made short work of that AMX 1375. So we've lost the Northern Crossing, completely lost it, and too little too late coming down the hill here. The KV-2 is a smoking wreck on top of the hill. Good, he's a retard. The average intelligence level of the team just actually went up a few IQ points with his death, so that's not a bad thing. Unfortunately the team is still overall dumb because of this prick up here. I, I, obviously, he's obviously found a really interesting window up there and he's stopping to give it a really good lick. Meanwhile, the light tanks are doing it all in this game. Aslak's platoon mate down there, desperately fighting off. A heavy tank rush coming over the southern railway crossing. Aslak has 10 shots of gold ammo, which he saves for special occasions. He doesn't need them right now. Okay, he's just been hit by an IS. Time to get the hell out of here. Without stage you're welcome. You are only in a tier 5 light scout. Taking pot shots at the bad guys is great, but if they start shooting back, you need to be moving. So, Aslak makes a decision. Um, Long-range sniping ain't working, they know he's there to start to shoot back, so he needs to start changing things around. And the weakest link in the enemy attack is this M6. We didn't even scratch him. Well played for that IS-6 driver, who basically had to drive all the way across that open field, getting shot at by everybody on that northern crossing, and pretty much single-handedly defending the northern flank did a fantastic job, Aslak turns up, steals his last kill, <laughs> and goes hunting enemy artillery. And that KV-3 is still giving those windows on top of that hill a really good licking. But we found the Hummer, and the Hummer's just fired, and he has no chance of defending us. And I, I love watching them turn and desperately trying to outmaneuver light tanks. <laughs> but there's a certain grim inevitability about it all. If he hadn't just fired, he might have had a chance, but uh, he did, so he didn't. And Aslak comes screaming back into the fray. 
please kill that KV-3. Enemy team, please, 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 please kill that retard in the KV-3. For me, just do it. Oh, a Lone Panther 2. With 133 health. 27 health. Dead. <laughs> Drive by execution. So there's our fifth kill. But we're in the perfect spot now, coming up behind the enemy team. And if they ain't paying attention to their minimap, this could get very, 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 very sticky for them. KV4 up there. We don't have a shot at him, but oh, we can give this IS some problems. This is probably the guy who was trying to blow our tracks off earlier. Why is that KV3 not dead yet? There is no justice in the film. He's sitting there at the top of that hill now, thinking, oh well, we've won this game. Oh, this is clearly the right thing to do. No, it isn't. You're a cretin. And suddenly, there's only one of them left. And unfortunately, shit for brains up here has just had his imbecilic behaviour reinforced by by winning. <laughs> so he's going to leave this game thinking, well, oh, I did well. No, you didn't. You're a fucking retard. And there's every chance that this Type 59, which is the only tank left on the enemy team, is just AFK. Now, I used to hate, absolutely detest, patch 7.5 and earlier, um, when you couldn't choose whether or not to play Assault. Absolutely hated being, uh, not even, well, att attacking on Prokhorovka, it was, oh, God. Um, defending on Prokhorovka was, was usually bad enough, but attacking was a bloody nightmare, and I would never do this. Just refuse to take part. Uh, regardless of what tank I was in, I would just make a beeline for the Norman Railway crossing and push over. And if people backed me up, great. If they didn't, great too. I'll just die first and I could play another tank. But I would never just do this, just abandon the game. That, this is just this is just douchebaggery. I can understand why people do it, but it ain't big and it ain't clever. So, there you go. Five kills. Could have been six. Uh, could have been more. But, you know, that's the luck of the draw. Not bad at all. Very well playing game. Lots of enemy tanks destroyed, lots of enemy tanks damaged, lots of enemy tanks detected. Good stuff all round. No special awards. Um, not surprising to see the IS-6 that basically went over to reinforce this northern flank. Getting a steel wall. <laughs> you think about it, he had to come all the way down from the hill and all the way across this field here up to that crossing while under fire by two or three enemy tanks at the same time so well played he saw that it needed doing he saw that he was the best tank on the team to do it he went and did it kv3 would have been helpful over there as well but you know look on the bright side one less retard getting in your way let him stay on the hill where he can't do any harm so that was aslak in his t50-2 um playing a really really good game in an assault match on prokhorovka on the defending team Next up, it's Vivir again. This time he's in the ELC AMX, and it's a tier six. Though quite, quite generous matchmaking, tier six encounter battle on Ensk. So good news, it's only a tier six game. Bad news, it's Ensk. Not the ideal map for the ELC. Too many tight, narrow city streets where opportunities for manoeuvring and turning. In particular are kind of limited because of course in a tank that doesn't actually have a turret being able to turn around quickly having a space to turn around quickly is key so he is actually going after that enemy ELC but he's not doing it the stupid way by running out in front of his gun um, and as it turns out he gets nailed by uh, oh T50 well played T50 Although the ELC was getting swarmed by multiple tanks. The driver obviously belonged to the suicide lottery group of light tank drivers. And, and the T-50, who just nailed the ELC, is just complaining that our own artillery nearly killed him. 
trying to shoot the ELC. Light tank drivers, friendly artillery is often more dangerous to you than it is to the enemy. Okay, so we haven't really seen much so far. Here's where it starts getting good. Watch this. SU-85B actually turns his back onto us, so yeah, we'll have some of that. And we've got Stug in there too. The SU-85B's been killed by the Sherman. And a horrible, horrible aiming time with this 90mm to go on the heels. But when it hits, oh yeah! Okay, we've got a KV-1 coming, but there's an enemy KV-1 up there too, and that Stug's going to be turning around any second now. Oh, the KV-1's aiming at us. Get out the way, get out the way, get out the way, get out the way. There we go, good, 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 good. Um, and KV-1's now turned his gun the other way. Right, fine. Give him the good news. And look at how much this gun hurts. Long reload, long aiming time. But if you just... Look at, you know, if you're just getting... Give us a target like this. Oh, we can have that stuff. Derp. Thank you. Kill number one. We've damaged a whole bunch of tanks, but that's our first kill. And this gun really does have a very, very long aiming time. As you can see, right here. He's waiting to aim, and it just takes so long. Ideally, the best use for this gun, this 90mm gun on the ELC. <coughs> the best use for it is, well, you can see here, zooming up to a tank, screaming to a stop, derping right into them, and then zooming off again. Like that. So you cannot possibly miss. Get so close, you cannot possibly miss. And then just blast them apart. And reload, and turn, and... Derp the armor. I know it's not a derp gun, but when you're doing this much damage <laughs> to tier three and four vehicles, it you know it feels like a derp gun. And you're gonna see some really good decision making here. There's four enemy tanks left. And he's just spotted. Okay, we we'll can so kill that T34. It looks like he doesn't even know we're here. So, boom. There we go. Now, two enemy tanks down at the bottom there. Oh, but there's an A20 on their flank. Okay. So we have a heavy, looks like a KV, and a medium. Mm, not sure what it is. T28. And they're both sitting in the cap circle. And our third heavy is also going for the cap circle. But M3 lead driver, sadly dead, is warning everybody that the Apparent that an enemy tier 5 and tier 6, and here they come, heading up from the south, they've looped around. Nice so, Vivir puts one shot into that A20, and then he thinks, he looks at the map, he knows what's going to happen. So, he thinks, right, screw the A20, the A20 ain't a threat. The Panzer IV and the Jumbo are. Not so much the Panzer IV. But definitely the jumbo, and the jumbo has very, very strong front line. And he's just killed the T28. And the KV1 can have severe problems penetrating the jumbo from the front. And while the jumbo's tanking the KV1, the Panzer IV, don't forget this is about 7.5, and the Panzer IV actually had a good gun. And you can see the Sherman there is just picking away at that KV's health with his 76mm gun. Boom, there goes the jumbo. We've lost the, sh the, the KV. And now we hide, and we wait, and we reload. And the old Panzer IV did have a very, very good gun. But in order to fit that very, very good, uh, good gun, he had to have the small turn, that big old Panther-type turret, which turned very, very slowly. And the Vier knew he could easily beat the Panzer IV's turret rotation. 
So now it's him versus an A20 that spent the entire game hiding on the field over on the eastern side of the map. So who's your money on? And that's Top Gun, by the way. So I'm going to speed this up a little because he's starting the cap. And now, of course, the A20 can either hide and lose or he can come and attack Vivir and probably lose <laughs> and die. So which of those two choices do you think he's going to make? Let's check out Vivir's positioning here, by the way. He's got Rex covering that side. He's got soft cover covering this side. Soft cover. He's very, very well hidden. That A20 is going to have to drive into him before he spots him. And he's almost capped. Come on, little guy. You can do it. Or maybe not. Yep, he's seen him now. Too late. <laughs> that was cruelty. <laughs> so there's seven kills. Um, and the guys that he killed... Let's have a quick look. Yep, tier five, tier... Oh, uh, no. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, the SU-26 is tier three, so... And the mod is tier three, so no bolters metal, but still, seven kills. Detected a bunch, damaged a couple. Sniper and top gun. Vivir in the ELC AMX. T-50-2 time again. This is Begzi. And he's on the uh, Mountain Pass map. It's a tier eight game. And his team appears to largely consist of inconsiderate arseholes, who all seem to be taking turns to drive into him. Always a good sign. Come on, Begsy. Off you go. The Mountain Pass is one of those maps that is not very scout friendly. Well, it's not very passive scout friendly because there aren't that many bushes you can sit in and spot and the bushes that are on the map um, don't really offer much of a view of anything. Light scouts, fast active scouts however, um, while it's still not the most amazingly scout friendly map in the game, they, they do have a slightly better time of it. So yeah, there are just too many there's no way he's going to survive if he stayed in that river basin. So he's getting the hell out of there. His job there is done. And observe friendly artillery. That was a friendly artillery. Very narrowly missed killing that AMX 1375. Okay. This guy is a prick. Just bear that in mind. Now, he's probably not doing it on purpose. He's probably just crap. Reckless. As much a danger to his own team as the enemy. Oh. Enemy Tiger P just suicided. Interesting. Come on then, Begsy. OK, there's an M5 up there. Now, he makes a pretty dubious choice here. That M5's got the howitzer. And it's hard to tell at this stage exactly what gun the M5 has. OK, the M5 missed that shot, so he probably doesn't have 100% crew. Or he is using the howitzer and he's not waiting for it to aim. But if he is using that howitzer, a hit from that howitzer can, can cause serious problems to a T-50-2. These all look like near misses. Then he's, he's just doing splash damage to him. And that was a hit. But the armour seemed to take it. So that that was not the smartest decision I've ever seen anybody do. I mean, it wasn't particularly stupid at the end of it. He's dead and begs he isn't. But the Tiger was the one that killed him. And, and there are better ways of dealing with the M5 than by popping out and, and exchanging shots with him. Especially if he had that howitzer loaded. So... Not an especially good bit of decision making, but not terrible because, you know, as I said, at the end of the day, we're still alive, the M5's dead. Now, had the two over there. 
and the tiger's backing off from him. Means the tiger probably doesn't feel too confident about what's around the corner from the Panther 2. But the Panther 2, in fact, if you check the map out, we've got a Super Persian coming up. Unfortunately, the Super Persian has turned his arse on an EK 45028. Eh? Meanwhile, we've set this Panther 2 on fire, and now we're just dancing around in front of this girl. <laughs> Oh, that was nasty. 45028, eh? instead of shooting at the Super Pershing, turned his sights on us and blew our tracks off in front of the Panther 2. Bad news. Repair kit used there. Get the hell out of here. Now, Panther. And we bounced a shot from a Panther. Hoo-ha. Now, remember that prick in the artillery I pointed out earlier? Yeah, he ain't done yet. Here it comes. There we go. Yeah, narrowly missed. I mean, it's almost as if he is actually aiming at friendly light tanks. And it's just a miracle that he's not hitting them. I mean, he probably isn't. He's probably just incredibly stupid and reckless. But, you know, what can you do? Random teammates. So we've got two kills now, which is nice. And there's that 4502A. Oh, and he's sideways on. Steady. Okay, he's dueling with an IS-3, so let's go in while he's distracted. Oh, we can totally have this one. Come on, penetrate, penetrate, penetrate. Oh, give me a break. Do more damage. Next one. Boom, gotcha. Kill number three. And there's only three of them left. It's like a Tiger, a Hummel, and a Type 59. No idea where any of them are, so we're going to have to assume that they're in the base. Which is a good sign, because, you know, if the Tiger and the Type 59 are still in the base, they suck. The yeah. Path. They suck. Type 59's been killed. Oh, and we found the Hummel as well. And this is where it gets amusing. Oh, Tiger hits us, damages the tracks. They're hit. And this rock is about to be through. our best friend ever. We've hit them hard. Humble fires and misses. Get him out this time. Tiger's not actually that dumb. A lot of times when you're circling a heavy tank in one of these little light tanks, you'll see them desperately trying to turn their turret around and forget that they can turn their hull as well to double their turret rotation speed. The Tiger driver at least knew he could do that. However, it didn't do him any good because now he's dead and we're not. And while that was only three kills for Begsy, um, and some slightly dodgy decision making attacking the M5 at the start there, but he, you know, as I said, he died, we didn't. But from that point on, <laughs> very well played game indeed. So Begsy in the T50 2 on Mountain Pass in a tier 8 game, well played. So the final replay in this roundup it's Monatomic again in his T50 2. It's a tier 7 game on Abbey. And again, it's one of those small maps where light tanking opportunities are strictly limited. But that doesn't mean you can't do well. You know, a good driver will make the most of whatever he's been given. And Monatomic is definitely a good driver. So here comes the enemy T50. And he's been spotted. He's not got any backup. There's more than one of them coming down that road. Time to get out of here. Now, that, right there, patch 8, absolutely, physics is a big problem <laughs> for light tank drivers, especially tanks as quick and manoeuvrable and light as the T50-2. And suddenly, investing in upgraded suspension seems like a wise investment for these light tanks. Now, hands up to those of you who didn't even know you could do this on Abbey. I, I certainly didn't, until I watched this replay. I didn't even know you could drive up here. Monatomic clearly does, and, and I've seen a couple of replays. Um, I can't 
can't remember the name of the driver, but there was a couple of M18 Hellcat replays on Ruinberg that he exploited parts of the terrain. Well, it's not exploit in, in the in the game sense, but you know he took advantage of parts of the terrain that previously were inaccessible to to get himself in a really good sniper position. Uh, and here, here on Abbey, I had no idea you could drive up here. Well, Monatomic clearly does, and he's putting that to good use. And this M36, this, this slugger or Jackson or whatever it's called these days. He knows he's getting shot at, but he has absolutely no idea where it's coming from. And then he's looking around him, he's thinking, where the hell? And he's going to realise, and around about now he thinks, oh, hang on a minute. And he brings the turret around, and he's just too slow. <laughs> so there's our first kill. But hang on, we're not done. SU-152 with 152 millimeter gun. And there's three enemy tanks in there. There were four. Somebody's just nailed an M6. But there's three enemy tanks inside there. Now, something else I didn't realise about this map in patch 8 is that you can get in there. More importantly, you can get out there. But I didn't even know that was there either. So I'm learning all sorts of new stuff watching these replays you guys are sending in. And how screwed is this SU-152? I mean, on a scale of one to fucked, <laughs> how badly screwed would you say he is? Okay, he manages to pull himself around, but he's not looking very clever. 125 health? Maybe one shot, probably two shots is going to kill him, but he is in an SU-152 and we have tissue paper for armour, so he can one-shot kill one atomic as well. So checking the map, his, his back is secure at the moment. How are we going to handle this? Well... Let's just make him think we're leaving. See if he's dumb enough to pop out. Uh, he is. Oh, but he's not that stupid. He's trying to trick us into firing. So he goes for his drive wheel, tries to blow his tracks off and pin him in place, but no, nope, you need to do more damage than that. So, uh, screw it. And there we go. That's the shot. Bang. Goodbye. Kill number two. Now, one thing that I was a bit disappointed by when patch 8 came out and these maps got remodelled was this, this spot up here, where, where you can see that dead panther. Uh, or Panzer IV even. That used to be an incredible spotting position. I used to love driving up here and just parking behind that bush in the chaffee, but that bush isn't there anymore. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's not really a very good passive spotting position anymore, unfortunately. However, there's some stuff to do back here. We're, we're losing 810. And oh crap. Now this is why. What are you going to see here? And, and if, there's, if there's one thing, I mean, the speed maneuverability are roughly similar in T50s and T50-2s, but the one thing that the T50-2 has that allows it to kick the arse of any number of T50s is the fact that the gun rarely misses. And you're going to be turning, moving, fight like this in a T50, and you're lucky if the gun hits once in every three shots. 250-2 doesn't, I mean the gun isn't as good in this sort of circumstance as the Chaffee's gun but it's still pretty damn good you rarely miss these shots it's one of the few circumstances in which I'd advise players to use auto-aim just to keep the turret pointed at the centre of mass and the enemy light tank so you can concentrate on driving, and more importantly, not driving into solid objects. But you know, if you're good enough, you can manually aim. Uh, and there are plenty of people out there that are good enough to be able to steer this thing at these sort of speeds and aim at the certain target that they're circling at the same time. And, you know, if you can do it, by all means, do it. So, two of them left. One tier seven. Ah, uh, tier seven heavy, there he is, he's an IS. And their artillery, and their artillery is probably sweating right about now. And he's the only one left. T25 has just nailed the IS. T25 holding that back row like a boss there. Three kills. And 
Adios, muchachos. There goes the Hummel. <laughs> so, Monatomic with Top Gun in a Tier 7 game on Abbey. Tiny little map. Limited opportunities for manoeuvre. Walking away with Top Gun. Very, very well played indeed. And showing me stuff that you can do on this map that I didn't even know you could. Getting around the the, the side and, and in through those little nooks and crannies up by the Abbey itself. Um, and, you know, watching your guys' replays. Your guys? Watching you guys' replays. Uh, I think I had it right the first time. My God, I forgot how to speak English. <laughs> watching your replays. Um, I've been learning as much as I hope the rest of you have been learning from watching them too. So um, it's been a learning experience for me too. Anyway, um, that was the last of the roundups. The next video that you see will include a winner. But I must hasten to add, choosing the winner for the light tank category has been a nightmare. Uh, in fact, I don't even know who the winner is yet. I've got a choice of four. Um, although technically, you could say I probably had a choice of about 14 or 15. And any one of them could have won. And it is literally... I, I may as well have just put all the replays in a hat and pulled one out. Uh, and that would have been just as fair a way of picking a winner. Um, they, they have all been equally good. Uh, you know, up to this kind of standard. And I dare say you guys will probably have your own favourite as well. But uh, I had to pick one of them. So, well... We'll see. Um, those of you who have not yet seen your replay featured in the Light Tank Roundup, um, who believe that their game was as good as any of the ones that you've seen so far, next video is going to be the moment of truth. Until then, take care, and I'll see you on the battlefield.